And welcome back. Uh, so She-Hulk, episode 8. Matt Murdock finally showed up. Daredeviled it up. Uh, gave some Jen some of that double D. Uh, the Daredevil. Um, but um, no, look. Right out the gate. This, this could have been the best episode of the series. As it stands, I think it's the second best. And the only reason I think it's the second best is that ending. And we'll get touch on that first. But let's talk about all the things I actually really liked about the episode. This, I think, had the best use of the humor we've seen in a long time in the series. Because for a while, ever since around episode maybe two and... Ever, yeah, I read around episode two. Even episode one, you can make an argument for it. The humor's been very hit and miss. There have been times where I thought it's been very funny. I stand as someone who likes the long-centric episode. <laughs> Uh, but then, like, the wedding episode was not very funny at all. The last episode, I, I liked all the stuff in the group. I thought that was entertaining, but the comedy hasn't really been working at, at its peak, uh, peak performance. This episode, the comedy was on, you know? I was like, who's this asshole? It's like, uh, what kind of fuel did you use? <laughs> Jeff Fields, like, I, I was not against my instructions. You, <laughs> it's like, going to jail? No, but you should! Uh, just the way Jen and Matt were interacting the whole time, you know, goons are... Henchmen are believe in the cause. Goons do it for the money. <laughs> um, I can hear your heartbeat too. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You can smash. You've never done this. You don't do this. I'll do. <laughs> uh, just to say, you know, uh, that's not a bad. That's not a bad argument. It's it a little fun. You might be able to go for PTSD. See a lawyer too? No, I just like a lot of legal shows. <laughs> like that worked. And Charlie Cox did, did no wrong. It it, it is a. It is a different side of Matt than what you got in the Netflix version, to be sure. It's a more lighter side, but you still got the idea that when it comes when it comes to his series, when you're dealing with a lot more serious shit going on in that series, um, it, he will definitely tone up the dra dramatic aspect of it. Because let's be very clear, whether you loved or hated some of these series, in terms of the tone some of them are striking, Falcon and the Winter Soldier... Moon Knight, um, they they take themselves very seriously and tonally too. A lot of time, it gets wacky at points, absolutely. But in terms of tone and tonality, that's not an issue. So I I feel very confident what we're gonna get out of the Daredevil series. His <coughs> his appearance in Echo. <coughs> oh, sorry, I just had dinner run right down the wrong pipe on that one. Uh, so yeah, I I do like the outfit too. The gold, I think the gold and red work. I do like that. I like that line too. It's like, oh yeah, mustard and red. It's like, oh, that look you said. Like, don't, don't. Um, I don't say I don't agree with the one person I heard say that. Uh, I wish the Luke character was a bit more diverse than what we're getting from him. What we're getting from him is very kind of one note. Um, it's like this is this character's personality. This is how they portray themselves. That's it. Uh, the Lee Frog stuff. The character was entertaining to watch bad things happen to him because you kind of got the impression this kid's a bit of a spoiled rich kid and a very big idiot. Uh, so it's a ah uh, no 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 uh, it's our, our honor an honorable retreat ah uh, ribbon ribbon ah uh, god my leg just the guy's an idiot but it was entertaining fights we had were fun. I like the flirting between him and Jen. Uh, that scene in the bar, obviously, we got from the trailers. Uh, but that was extended. Uh, I like the fact that they hooked up. Uh, <laughs> I'll say this. The walk of shame, while funny, I do think, I do wonder on the logistics, like, well, Daredevil's now just in broad daylight walking down the street. I mean, she could have at least, you know, would have been tight on, but she could have given him a shirt. He could have maybe worn the outfit more like as a jacket or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. That that stuck in my head when I saw that. But I'd say that it is funny. I liked it. I also say this the fourth wall break, some of the best ones we had in the series, because you kind of like, it's not just me, right? You're kinda of, we're kinda of feeling this, right? <laughs> like, I like that too. I thought all that was great. Uh so I mean like up until up until we got to at the you know the, the walk of shame thing, I thought this was the best episode of the series. And then we get to the last three to five minutes. And leading up to, it's not necessarily what happens that's a problem, although I do think there's a bit of pro, there, there's something to be said about that, uh, and that, the slander sequence, we'll call it. Um, it's, if A comes down to me, 
to something that I realized after watching that, where, first off, tonally, that whole, you know, it's one thing for them to be putting your information up, but the minute you put up the sex tape of her and Josh on there, I'm like, oh, this went into an icky territory. This, I don't feel comfortable watching this scene now. And if this, my problem with that isn't, isn't that like what they did. It's the fact that totally, it's not mixing with the rest of the show at all. The rest of this entire show has been billed as mostly a co legal superhero comedy. Granted, we've had dramatic moments in it, but it, that's what the show has been billed as. Billed as, and this is a This is like icky House of Cards, uh, Succession kind of. This is this is the kind of stuff you'd see in a show like that, where it's not billed as a comedy, where it is billed as a legal drama, thriller, intense. No, that's the kind of thing you'd see there. The fact that we had that scene in a show like this, tonally. Did not, honestly, it didn't sit well with me. Uh, it'd be one thing if they just put her information up, sure. But it's, once she went in there, I'm like, ugh, and I'm not sure how my girlfriend's gonna react. I have a feeling she's gonna get, feel icky, because I felt icky about that. I'm like, because I've seen, oh, and I've seen far worse in movies, by like, far, far worse. But again, it's the tone. It, it, like, it took just a, okay, this is our road, this is our road. We're taking a hard left totally for a few seconds. But I'm like, Wow. That, that just, that did not feel right. And I get what the whole concept of that end scene is. She lost her temper, not as a person, but as a Hulk. She lost her temper. And, you know, she went after what she, who we believe, it looked like Todd, um, it, who she believed to be one of the people responsible for it. And then she got shown in public as this monster of who's not controlling yourself. And you can see kind of that look on her face, like, this is what Bruce meant. When they see start seeing you as a monster, that never goes away. I hate the fact that we've gone all the way to the second to last episode for that to sink in for her. It's And I th feel like this episode has kind of been building up the whole idea that not only does she not know what she's doing, she doesn't realize how different her life is now. She's never understood... Bruce was just trying to protect her. And I still go back to that line in the first episode that does really annoy me. It's like, you know, I know how to control my eyes because I do it infinitely more than you do. I'm like, if you had said that to any other male character in the MCU, <laughs> literally any other, Tony, Thor, uh, Hawkeye, but T'Challa, may rest in peace. Like, if you had said that to any other male character, it would have probably landed, probably landed, maybe not 100%, but still would have landed. As it stood, though, it's like, you bitch, you realize you're talking to the Hulk who, if he has a bad day, and he's had many bad days, people will die by the dozens, if not hundreds. And you got the gobble, and then again, they're ripping into him about him ruining his life. It's like, he didn't choose it, it was a freak accident. Like, I still, I don't forgive that her character for that still. Like, that, that was really uncalled for, honestly. Um, like she was really out of line against uh, Bruce in that scene. And I feel like this episode, Matt telling her, you don't do this. You're not used to, it. I've done this. And then Hulk, or, and then her losing her temper and realizing kind of what that meant. I feel like they're like in the final episode now, kind of bringing it all together. Like for her finally coming to the realization, uh, to who a realization about who she is. And again, Matt, again, us, uh, Matt doing the whole, like, yeah, I think you're in a unique position, uh, dialogue, which was great dialogue. Um, I feel like that, like, we're reaching that point, but we should have more, <laughs> we should have, we should have more reached that point, maybe two episodes earlier, leaning into this episode. Um, but believe it or not, that's not where I was getting at. What I, getting at in terms of the everything I had a problem with the episode, I had a problem with that in from the characterization. I, I like Jen. Jen's really good in this episode. This might be the best I've, most I've liked Jen in this entire series. And I've overall liked her. Again, the first episode, me having problems with her notwithstanding. But, now we need to know who the head of the intelligentsia is. Is it Todd? Is it Josh? Is it someone we actually know? Like a character? We like Is the leader there or something? We, we need to know that. But by all accounts... Do you understand what this show has kind of done? She-Hulk's main villain in this show isn't Titania. 
she was like a rival, a petty fashion, a petty um, social media uh, mogul. Um, but she, it's not Titania. It's not. Uh, it's not even the legal system. Like her male. Con- By the way, how kind of oh, how cringy was the whole female world that they all stepped up and like oh god. Uh, I love the Mallory's response to that. Yeah, like, oh, you know, the under overworked, underpaid, underappreciated, and constantly being asked how does it like to be a female or I like that. <laughs> I did like that response. Um But no, it's not Titania, it's not a legal system, it's not Mamble, it's not abomination, as far as we know. It's none of that. It is incel men it's men. It is incel men women hating men. Particularly they're hating on She Hulk. But it's that. It's gross men. Now, obviously, we have one more episode to go. They're going to obviously reveal who some of the intelligentsia are here, why they're ultimately doing this. Uh, But at least for right now, episode eight, that's what She-Hulk's ultimate enemy in this series is. And look, you can do men versus women and not have it seem sexist. You can't. You can do that. Make both parties... And they did that great with this episode. Matt, even though She-Hulk is by all accounts more powerful than them and technically win the fight, Matt is more experienced. He took the lead. He was the one basically calling the shots, more or less. And it was... It, but she was clearly doing her own thing. It was a... Even, they were on an even footing with each other. I don't know why I'm doing this, but they were on an even footing with each other. So I felt that worked out great. That worked out well. But if you're doing it for the whole series, there's... There's a way to do it that make it, makes it seem equal. The series didn't do that. There's a way to do it that doesn't make it seem sexist. The series did not do that. Because you have She-Hulk, the female Hulk, and her main villain. And I get that they're trying to do commentary, but they've been doing commentary the whole season. And you know what? This I don't... While it hasn't always been great, at least it was kind of like being addressed throughout the season. You're telling me that your main adversary is basically whiny incel like guys for your for apart from miss marvel and wandavision i guess but and wandavision was co-led though even though wanda's technically the lead but in terms of miss marvel and miss marvel didn't have like have to deal with like all that sexist crap but you're telling me about the whole i guess sexism would have to play a factor in the series i hate the fact that it's the main antagonist that i think is my problem why is that why does that have to be the main antagonist I don't understand that. I understand it had to play a part, and it's been playing a part. Like, sexism in the workplace, she's a Hulk, and this guy and her boss just kind of, like, dismisses, like, everything she's, like, bringing up. Like, her boss is a douche. I hope she, if she does end up quitting or getting fired, I hope she just tells his ass off, because the guy is a bit of an ass. Um, But, yeah, I hate the fact that that's kind of at least what they're portraying right now. That's kind of the main... um, like main villain for her now is dealing with these sexist assholes. And I hate that. I actually, the blogger I talk about, the more I really hate that. That's taking a series that I've been re- honestly enjoying for a solid It hasn't been like, a, it's not definitely hasn't been a 10, but it's been above a five, which is, you know, the halfway mark, 50%. It's been at least a solid seven to 7.5. That takes something that could have been maybe like an eight and probably is going to make me, and I'm going to like the app series ultimately around a six and a half to a seven, if I were to rate it. Which, to be very clear, one means it's awful, ten means it's the best thing ever, or or at least, in my opinion, one of the best things ever. Like, I, I couldn't change anything about it. Five means it's okay. I like it. A 6.5 to 7 is a good rating. So, but look, hopefully the final episode will stick the landing. I hope it will stick the landing. We'll have, we'll have to wait and see. But until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see... Oh, God. Ew, excuse me. I'll see you folks for the next one. Later.